Good morning everybody and welcome to Adventure Church Online. Remember that you can have a look at the Adventure Church playlist on our uh, YouTube channel, the Valley Church YouTube channel, to catch up on any lessons that you might have missed over the last little while. We are moving uh, swiftly along to uh, session 8 of Here Comes Heaven and this is where we are going to change gears slightly and move into part 2 of the book. And this is um, going to be evident because we have spent a lot of time looking at what the Kingdom of Heaven is and kind of the, the theory behind it and now we're going to move into some of the more uh, practical aspects of how we can really bring Heaven to Earth. So I'm super excited for for the next uh, couple of weeks that we will um, be joining together and looking through this material together. Um, it's been really awesome just to hear a little bit of feedback uh, from some of your parents about how you're enjoying these videos. Um, so please uh, keep the encouragement going. Let me know if um, you're enjoying these and let's just jump right into it. One of my favorite things that we did uh, during my time in school was when we would have a show and tell session at school. We would get a bunch of different people bringing very different things uh, from usually from all over the world or things that I had never seen before um, and they would all come to school and they would have their, their few minutes to explain to the class what this item either meant to them or how they got it, something interesting about this item and it was super fun. Sometimes uh, kids would even make something, um, some kind of uh, dish that we would all be able to have a little taste of. Um, those were particularly um, enjoyable and interesting. If we think about how Jesus taught his disciples and uh, the crowds that often gathered around him, we can see that it was very similar to uh, a show and tell that you might be familiar with. Jesus would teach for a bit and then he would actually show everyone what he meant by either doing miracles, um, healing someone, uh, making a blind person see, healing someone that uh, couldn't walk, he would send them off running. So we see a very clear pattern of him teaching and then actually doing something. So very similar to showing and then telling. If we uh, have a look at our Bibles, in Matthew 4 verse 23, it says that Jesus went to the churches and taught about the kingdom and healed all kinds of sickness and disease. And then later on in Matthew chapter 10 uh, verse 7 and 8, it says that Jesus would say to his disciples, go and tell everyone the kingdom of God is nearby and then heal the sick, raise the dead and set people free from the devil. Jesus was never a boring teacher. He didn't just tell people about the kingdom of God. He actually showed them what it looked like. When people hear and see something, it makes it easy to understand. And Jesus used God's power and presence to do these miracles. If people just hear um, about God's kingdom and don't see God's power, they will turn into balloon heads. Paul called this being puffed up with knowledge. You can read more about this in 1 Corinthians 8 verses 1. When someone thinks they know everything, they start getting all full of pride and being prideful isn't good. It usually means that you start to think that you're better than other people. Later on in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 20, it says that the kingdom of God is not just words but power. God's presence and power shows what the Bible says is true. This will feed our hearts um, and it will grow our relationship with God and with others. Having a big heart is way better than having a big head. I often think about what it would be like to meet someone who is really important or really famous. Uh, if you think about it, who are some of your favorite famous or important people. What would you do with that person if you got to spend, let's say, a whole day with them? You could go to different places, do fun things with them, and I'm sure the more time you spent with them, the more you would really get to know them. This is how it is with God. When we go on adventures with Him and spend time with Him, reading His Bible, praying with Him, 
This is how you really get to know who God is and what he thinks of us. When we go on adventures with God and spend lots of time with him, we grow closer to him. While we can learn about who God is by reading the Bible, we can also learn about him and meet him through his Holy Spirit. This journey of getting to know God is a little bit like going on a treasure hunt. The fun part of a treasure hunt is trying to figure out the map. God's word, the Bible, is like a map. But we also have a guide to help us. The Holy Spirit is our guide and he helps us to make sense of the Bible. The whole Bible is a beautiful story of lots of little stories that are connected and its main message is that our daddy God loves us so much. So as we begin to spend some time with God now, I want us to focus on the treasure that is God's word. Go get your Bible and find a quiet spot somewhere. Then ask the Holy Spirit to show you some treasure in God's word. Open your Bible to one of the Gospels. That's either Matthew, Mark, Luke or John. Read about what Jesus did. Thank God for sending Jesus and tell him about how great he is and all the good things that he has done for you. Read some more and tell someone about one of the stories that you found. And remember to have something with you so you can write down or draw some of the things that you learned. It's been so good being with you again on this Sunday morning and I can't wait until next week. I'll see you then. Bye.